For some actors, looking the part comes naturally. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 biopic actors who resemble their real-life counterparts. And after America has long passed from the scene, there will still be black people. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're counting down actors who took on roles in biographical films and happened to be dead ringers for the people they played. However, we're excluding cases where they cheat with makeup or prosthetics, so you won't be seeing people like Charlize Theron and Monster on this list. No, see, I was, um, I'm sorry, but when I read the ad, it said that you were looking for a secretary. Number 10, Eddie Redmayne as Stephen Hawking, The Theory of Everything. And eventually, they disappear in a spectacular explosion. For this film, Redmayne accepted the challenge of playing the theoretical physicist with a debilitating case of ALS. Despite being offered the role without an audition, he prepared for months by binging on documentaries and video clips of Stephen Hawking. But Redmayne's hard work and dedication to perfecting Hawking's speech inflections and mannerisms only supplemented the physical similarities. I have two years to live. Sorry? After seeing the film, Hawking reportedly emailed the director to praise the portrayal, saying that there were certain points where he thought he was watching himself. It's no wonder Redmayne earned the Best Actor Academy Award that year. Does that mean that there is a universe out there where I am smarter than you? Yes, and also a universe where you're funny. Okay. All right. Number 9. Salma Hayek as Frida Kahlo. Frida. Tell me your plans, Frida. Actress Salma Hayek and painter Frida Kahlo are both Mexican artists, but the similarities don't end there. Just as Frida's passion bursts out of the self-portraits she painted, Salma's charisma surges from the screen. Right now I'm a burden, but I hope to be a self-sufficient cripple one day. After that, I don't know. Both personalities were professionals and pop culture icons, so Hayek was an excellent fit for the role. She was actually so inspired by the surrealist painter's legacy that she made every effort to land the part. She tracked down one of the exes of Kahlo's late husband for direct access to her paintings, and even assembled a supporting cast of her own. In this case, Salma Hayek saw Frida in herself, and now that we've seen the final result, we have to agree. You're doing very well on your own. I'm proud of you. You don't need Enough. It. If you want to go, just go. Number 8. Gary Oldman as Sid Vicious. Sid and Nancy. <laughs> Can you tell which is the star and which is the musician? Back in the 80s, Oldman bore such an uncanny resemblance to the punk rock, heroin abusing sex pistol Sid Vicious that they were practically indistinguishable. However, despite the physical likeness, Oldman had no interest in the musician or his genre and, according to the DVD commentary, had to be pressured by his agent to take the role. You really think you can buy Sid off of me? F you. But once he accepted it, Oldman went all in starting a crash diet so he could even more closely resemble the practically emaciated musician. While that ultimately led to his hospitalization, the performance Oldman delivered was eerily spot on. Hey, yeah. Just wait and see. Number 7. Val Kilmer as Jim Morrison, The Doors. Nothing will destroy our circle. Ride the snake. Ride the snake. Director Oliver Stone considered Val Kilmer for the biopic about the Doors frontman after seeing his striking physical likeness to Jim in the 1988 film Willow. Castle? That more of troops are crushing everything inside. Well, come on, let me out of here, Eric. Give me a sword. I'll win this war for you. And Kilmer was so enthused about the opportunity that he made his own Jim Morrison impersonation reel to cement the director's decision. Once booked, he lost all the weight necessary and learned 50 of the band's songs. What's more, Kilmer reportedly went full method for this one. He dressed, behaved, and lived like Jim Morrison for a full year before filming. Perhaps even more impressive is the fact that members of The Doors themselves were unable to distinguish between the two singing voices. Jim Morrison, the god of rock and cock. Number 6. Robert Downey Jr. as Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Although Charles Chaplin's career spanned over 75 years and quite a bit of Hollywood film history, the average moviegoer knows him best for his time as a silent film star. And although Robert Downey Jr. did an admirable job speaking and acting as Chaplin the Man, 
It's the non-verbal language that stands out the most. Everything from Charlie's posture to his silhouette was duplicated for authenticity's sake. Fast enough! Cut! God damn you, Chaplin! What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> Since Chaplin was such a physical actor, in addition to mimicking his affectations, the dedicated Downey also learned tennis and took violin lessons for some scenes. And since Downey looked the part as well, the final result was practically perfect. <laughs> Number five, Denzel Washington as Malcolm X. Malcolm X. We must work together. We must find a common solution to a common problem. A pair of glasses and a haircut were all that was required for Denzel Washington to physically transform into one of the most influential human rights activists and political figures of the civil rights era. We feel that the problem, number one, of the black man in America is beyond America's ability to solve. It's a human problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. But there's more to Malcolm X than that. There's attitude, charm, and a determined manner of speaking as well and Washington nailed every aspect. Well, you should never join any organization unless you know exactly what it's about. It's an iconic and controversial role, but with Spike Lee in the director's chair and Denzel's eye for nuance, the charismatic actor was not only able to give an Oscar-nominated performance, but also to convince non-believers that, despite a few physical dissimilarities, he could effectively portray Malcolm at multiple stages of his life. Because the mother is the first teacher of the child. The message that she gives that child, the child gives to the world, so we have to be very careful. Number four, Daniel Day-Lewis as Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. And come February the 1st, I intend to sign the 13th Amendment. Abraham Lincoln lived before a president's mannerisms could be captured for all time, so it's difficult to critique the accuracy of Daniel Day-Lewis's portrayal. Thanks to available archive photos and memoirs, this famous method actor was able to bring Lincoln to life in an Academy Award-winning biopic portrayal. Ah, well, news. Why, for instance, is this thus? And what is the reason for this thusness? A picture is worth a thousand words, and Daniel Day-Lewis had little more than that in order to channel the pensive, objective, self-aware, influential, and articulate 16th president of the United States. But the English actor's screen presence is so strong that all he needed to excel in this historical drama, other than his excellent acting chops, of course, was extra facial hair. We'll be made to just, pay with our sons. Just son, this dear. once, Mrs. Lincoln, I demand of you to try and take the liberal and not the selfish point of view. Number three, Michelle Williams as Marilyn Monroe. My week with Marilyn. I'm 30. I guess that makes me an old lady to you. Marilyn Monroe was undoubtedly a singular star, but the similarities between the real Marilyn and the one in this film are still striking. Tomorrow I'm on television. You remember I told you about it? In this not-so-typical biographical film, Michelle Williams did not have to portray Monroe through an extended period of her life. Instead, it's about, as the title suggests, a seven-day period during the film shoot of The Prince and the Showgirl. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to fall in love with you. Perhaps more scandalously, the film also portrays the blonde bombshell's alleged affair with her personal assistant. The biopic format allowed Williams to showcase different aspects of her own abilities, by channeling the actress, the lover, and the singer in her. It also earned her a well-deserved Golden Globe Award. There will be nothing to lose till you lose your heart. Number two, James Franco as James Dean. James Dean. Well, I, got, I got James Dean, Jimmy Dean, and Byron Dean. To say that Franco bears an uncanny resemblance to the rebel without a cause would be an understatement. But you see right through me, don't you? But to portray someone in a biopic, an actor must do more than look the part. To master his role in this made-for-TV film, Franco scrutinized all three of Dean's movies and picked up a number of his habits, like smoking, playing instruments, and riding a motorcycle. He also picked up on Dean's more intangible qualities, from his attitude and swagger to what Franco characterized as a pervasive loneliness. In the end, James Dean is a symbol of teen angst and nonconformist behavior, and Franco depicted him to a T. Did that doctor tell you anything about me? So. Perfect! <laughs> Before we hold the mirror to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sure, if you're good enough. <laughs> Excuse me. 
likes me? Bill Atkinson says that you're good. I guess I think I'm pretty good. Are you creative? I, I, I think so. Welcome to the Macintosh team. Number one, Jamie Foxx as Ray Charles. Ray. I mean, you told me to find my own voice. Well, B, this is it. For this Oscar-winning performance, Jamie Foxx was inspired by Ray Charles' ability to overcome both poverty and disability to find success. And with loads of talent of his own and more than a passing resemblance to his subject, Fox completely transformed into the blind soul music pioneer many years his senior. Now baby, listen, baby, don't you treat me this away, cause I'll be back on my feet someday. Although Fox didn't dare imitate Ray's singing voice for the film, he did dedicate himself to duplicating everything else he could to represent the man. He even rehearsed with his eyes glued shut and took lessons in braille. Exactly. Other than that, you were doing swell. Fox was also fortunate enough to play piano with the musical genius, and it certainly shows in the film. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.